Alrighty, good day everybody, it's the dog guy. It's another showcase video today, see, because my video game ones don't seem to be interesting to anyone. Plus, I haven't been in the mood for them. Today's video, I've not seen anybody review this box set anywhere on YouTube, so I'll probably be the only one that does. Back in 2015, Carl Chisel had put out a box set of all of their studio albums up to that point, and here it is. This box is a little beat up because it's been sitting on the floor because I've had nowhere to put it since I got it, really. It's had to shift locations a few times, but it's been mostly on the floor. This came out in 2015 and costs about close to $355. And as you can see, it's the back of it. There's all the albums and as well as that live EP as well. Buy this back in 2015. My mother and I had to go halves in it because I didn't exactly have a great deal of money at the time. I think it was early August 2015. Let's have a look at each record inside. Like last time, we start off with the first album, self titled debut. Pretty much looks the same as last time. And we've got some barcodes and stuff on the back. Each one inside the gay fold cover is pretty much the exact same as last time, so we'll just pull out the albums themselves. This one's in a generic white sleeve, but I'm going to remove it completely. So this side one. And, of course, we've got side two. Okay, now we move on to the EP from the same year. Of course, I'm not going to say the name of this out loud. I mean, it's quite an explicit name. I mean, really. It wasn't really acceptable even back in 1978 anyway. But, as I mentioned before in my previous video, this has some pretty good live performances of some of the songs from the first album. And again, this one was just some generic sleeve, but we'll pull it out to show anyway. Side one. And side two. Excellent. Now we move on to the 1979 second album, which is, of course, Breakfast at Sweethearts. As you can see, the sticker was moved to the right side as opposed to the left that the original release had it on, although some reissues from the 1980s did have the sticker on the right side as well. And the insert is pretty much the same as the original, maybe a slightly different colour of the font, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. And the same images, I think, on the back. I don't think I showed these on the other one last time. It's fairly ordinary, but hey, it was 1979 and still early days. Again, generic labels, that's all these were. And the second side as well. Excellent. And of course, we move on to East from 1980. Uh, I do have the 7 inch that came with this reissue, but I have actually removed it and put it elsewhere with my other 7 inch single collection, so it will not be shown here. I'll probably show it off, maybe in another video, where I might show off more of my 7-inch single collection. I do have a really 
really decent sized collection. Relatively big to be honest. Inside cover pretty much the same as the last one. Majority of the lyrics. I think the lyrics on this have been corrected from the original. There were a couple of mistakes, I think, with cheap wine. <clears throat> and we get on with the LP itself. Man, these are filthy. I really should clean these. But I haven't been bothered because these are just for collection, really. These aren't for playing. probably go crazy with the way I'm holding these two but as I said these are these are new so it's not really worth being delicate with them and of course we move on to the band's best album well that's just my opinion 1982's Circus Animals As previously mentioned in my previous video, it has some of their best songs. I think there was a couple of mistakes with the lyrics in this one as well that were corrected. Hang on, where's the insert? There it is. Yeah, I think there was a mistake in the original lyrics of Bow River, and I think there may have been one elsewhere, I'm not so sure. It may have been just that one. And, of course, we pull out the record itself. Uh. Alright, on to the next one. 20th Century. Again, it's from 1983-84 or so. This does come with a poster, but again, I think I got rid of it because I just didn't see the point of keeping it. I have nowhere to put it. Keeping it inside the thing is not exactly the best idea either. I say you shouldn't throw things away like that, but you know, other people often do that. I don't think I showed these off properly. Slightly different font for the song titles as well. The lyrics on this side. The other info on the other side. It's stuck. Ah. Oh. There we go. And, of course, the second side as well. Brilliant. Now we move on to the albums that weren't originally released on vinyl, but they have been as of late. In 1994, a um, compilation was put together of some of the band's unreleased material at the time. It was titled Teenage Love. A good portion of the material was just basically outtakes and demos from that particular period. This has been slightly expanded. The side four tracks were not present on the original CD. But they are present on this vinyl release. Um, pretty much they've all been released previously back in... Around that time as well. Yeah, just a generic insert. Might as well not even show them. It's been a while, so, you know. Can't even remember what side is what. Some of the songs were released as singles, like Hands Out of My Pocket and Nothing But You. Some of these songs go back to, like, I think 1978, When the Sun Goes Down, was originally called Idleness and then was reworked a couple of times and demoed in 19... 
83 or so, but it was sort of scrapped. And Teenage Love Affair was probably the heaviest song they'd recorded during that time. According to the liner notes, that song was written to try and get back at ACDC for blowing them off the stage. <laughs> I don't know how true that is, though. Inside so tune, we've got the studio version of Mona and the Preacher, which as was recorded live for the EP, as shown earlier. Drinking in Port Lincoln goes back to mid-1976, that particular song. Bit of a fast rock and roller from that particular era. Sort of vanished after that, which is a shame, though. Although his lyrics are a little on the suggestive side. We've got the majority of the publishing info here. Near the side three, a couple of the songs here are partially redone. Uh, so F111 was a reworking of a song that had been in the set list in 1978 and was for a little while earmarked to be the band's second single following K-San, but they subsequently decided to scrap it. And they reworked it again in early 1981, but they ended up scrapping it again and then eventually made it this compilation. And uh, the track after it, A Little Bit of Daylight, would be reworked slightly by Jimmy Barnes and would become one of his early solo single hits from that particular period. Personally, I prefer the Cold Chisel version. It has a bit more up-tempo, a bit more better musical arrangement, even if some of the lyrics are not quite finished at that point. And then The Party's Over, which was also on the B-side of the 7-inch single that came with the East album, limited edition. And Side 4 had been material that had been released. Uh, Misfits was originally the B-side of My Baby from the East album. And uh, Hey Hour Hotel and On the Road were included with a single, I think it was the Hands Out of My Pocket single, I think, around 94. Hold Me Now was an unreleased song from the demo sessions in 1977. Four Walls early demo with its longer title is, has been released digitally on the Live of the Wireless compilation live album from 1977. Only this version seems to be slightly sped up compared to the iTunes version. I don't know if that's a speed issue or how this was pressed. Because I did do a needle drop onto USB back in 2015 where it skipped a few times during HR Hotel but I already had that on on CD anyway from the 1999 release reissue of the debut album and Bunny's Blues was another unreleased demo from 77 or so one of the rarer songs anyway when Chisel first reunited in 1997 their first attempt at putting an album together at that point was this 1998 release titled The Last Wave of Summer. This here is the only vinyl release because we'd pretty much stopped selling vinyl around 1998 anyway. And this, of course, is based off the early 2000s reissue, which extended the album from, I think it was originally 14 songs to 20 songs. A few of the songs were singles, like The Things I Love In You, which, it's a good song, but it's a bit soft compared to what they had done before. Probably the heaviest song on the album is Babies On Fire, which is definitely, it was used during the 1998 tour as the opening song, and more often than not, Jimmy Barnes would screw his vocals over by singing it too aggressively. And, of course, Steve Presswich's single from the album Water Into Wine, which is one of the few songs to be acoustically played, and probably my favourite from the whole album, to be honest. Good to hear Jimmy Barnes actually singing and not screaming himself to death. <laughs> okay, let's get the gatefold. The title track is also a pretty good song too, and This Big Old Car is another good song too. 
Let's get the LPs out of the jacket. It's been a while since I had a look at this, so, you know. Got the lyrics here. This is the longest Cold Chisel album by far. It goes for over an hour or so. Pretty much everybody contributed at least two or three songs to the album. Steve Presswich probably wrote about five, I think. And of course, the piano player Don Walker wrote the majority of them. As he is still the, the main songwriter for the band even up until recently. Uh, hang on. Let's get the second one out. Keep forgetting that these newer ones are often split over several vinyls. Some good ones here. Oh yeah, I think Way Down was a single as well, or at least might have been, I don't know. I don't know, Radio's attitude towards Cold Chisel started to change during that period, you know, and they started playing more of their old stuff instead of the new stuff. Which is a shame, but you know, I guess that's the way it is. Oops! Okay, and now the last one in the box was their first album in something like 13 years at that point. The last decade or so, Cold Chisel have put out three albums than they had in the past 20 odd years prior to that. And this is their 2011 album, I think it is. Hang on, I need to... Pull this out of the sleeve here. Officially titled No Plans. This was the last album to feature any contributions from Steve Presswich before his unfortunate death in 2011. He only contributed to just four of the songs, I believe, including the, the single off the album, which was All For You. And I Got Things To Do, I believe, was one of the others. I'm not so sure. I think he recorded at least four of the songs. And they got in Charlie Drayton, who was briefly married to the Divinals lead vocalist, the late Chrissy Amphlett. And it also played drums with them as well. And now he is currently Cold Chisel's drummer whenever they decide to do anything together. Yeah, yeah we've got some lyrics here. Mm. The title track actually does have a couple of swears in it, so I, hopefully these are illegible. I won't say what the swear is, but you know. Not too bad an attempt to make another album. I do have their most two recent albums as well on vinyl, but I'll probably show those in the next video. I just wanted to stick to the box set for today. Got to get back on the road, definitely. Sounds very melancholic compared to what some of the other stuff they've done. But this is still a reasonably good album. Just shows you how much Chisel have aged since the old days. Anyway, record two as well. When this album came out in 2011, I didn't even buy it. I was going to buy it on CD at the time, but at the time I couldn't make up my damn mind. And I think I got it wrong. It was actually 2012 when this came out. So that's how much I've been paying attention. So when I got the box set, I finally decided to play this album. And I'm like, okay, maybe I should have bought it on CD. So I finally did. I believe this is the only physical release to include both versions of I Got Things To Do. Which, according to Jimmy Barnes, the original plan was for Jim to do the entire vocal track... And at some point during the demos, Steve had put down a guide vocal for Jim to follow. And when the album was being mixed, the Steve guide vocal was chosen instead. So 
when the band were listening back to it afterwards, everyone was surprised to hear Steve singing and they decided, you know what, let's use that version for the official release. And that's what we got on CD, whereas this vinyl here includes both versions, both with Jim doing the vocals and with Steve doing the vocals as well on side four. Anyway, that is the end of the video. Be sure to leave a like if you're a Cold Chisel fan. And if you're new to the Cold Chisel, be sure to check out their material you can find elsewhere on YouTube. Be sure to press the subscribe button. We're not too far off 100 subscribers now. And until next time, this is the Dog saying have a great day, everybody. And we shall see you again.